Good morning. <clears throat> I think we'll survive it now. There's a song that I'm reminded about, and it goes like this. Expect a miracle every day. As expect a miracle when you pray. If you expect it, God will uh, find a way to perform a miracle for you each day. I trust this morning that you've come expect, expect it with expectancy and that you will not leave this place the same than what you came in Jesus' name. I also want to say to you this morning that we are living in the greatest hour of the church. The church is going back to the book of Acts. The book of Acts, when we read that, it is filled with miracles, signs, and wonders uh, performed by the disciples of Jesus. So the name of Jesus was proclaimed with power in the church of the book of Acts. And so the same authority that they had, that same authority Christ has given to you and me. And Jesus has not changed because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so every one of us, I hope, wants to see and experience signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen? Humanity is crying out for a living God. They want to see and experience what God has. And that is why church can no longer be done the same way. Few songs, open up in prayer, preach and say amen, and we all go home. If the time is changing, if we want to see and experience what God has for us, then the Holy Spirit must have preeminence in the meetings. We must make room for the Holy Spirit to move. Forget about your watch. Forget about the time. If we are, I want you to know that I'm desperate to see God move in this place. And I'm telling the Holy Spirit every day, He is welcome in this place. Saturate this place. Saturate our lives. And we want God to move, but He's got to start with us first. And then with the person sitting next to us in our families before he can go out and do what he wants to do or desires to do. And so to, um, so to see and experience, we must believe. It's not going to take the anointing. It's going to take faith to see signs, miracles, and wonders. And when we put our faith in action, that's when the anointing uh, of the Holy Spirit will be released upon us and in our midst. Because Acts 1 verse 8 says, You shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. I want to ask you this morning, have you received power? Have you received the Holy Spirit? Then you have received power to cast out demons, power to heal the sick, power to heal the brokenhearted, power to proclaim liberty to the captives, power to set at liberty those that are oppressed. You, are you part of that generation that will hear the groaning of the prisoner who will declare the name of the Lord to those who are without hope? That is the generation that God's going to raise up. Those that hear the groanings of the prisoners. And if you and I want to be part of that generation, then we have to allow the Spirit of God to open up our eyes Open up our ears, open up our hearts for Him to touch us and to do a work in our lives. So this morning I'm going to show you some examples out of the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. So I'm, I've taken two out of the Old Testament and the first example we're going to look at is the one called by a person by the name of Moses. When we go to Exodus chapter 2, we read that, that the angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. And God spoke to Moses, saying, I've seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of Egypt. And Moses, you are the man that I will use. So Moses replied to what God said to him. And the Bible says, I'm just reading it to you, Who am I when I come to the children of Israel and say to them? In other words, the Egyptians, I don't know in plain English, 
I don't know whether the Egyptians are going to believe me because even amongst my own people, I don't know if they would, re if they would believe what you say to me. And he said, there, what, and, and the God of the fathers has sent you to, me to you. So they will ask, what is his name? What shall I say to him? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. And you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. And so when we read on in that chapter, we find that God spoke to Moses and he said to him, take the elders with you and go to the king of Egypt and say to him, the Lord God of the Hebrews has met with us. And now please let us go three days journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. I want you to turn with me to Exodus chapter 2 because we're going to see the answer there. And God's word puts it much better than what I can. I think it's, it's uh, Exodus chapter 3. Let me just make sure. Verse 19. Yes. Exodus chapter 3, verse 19, he says, But I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not even by a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand, this is God speaking, and strike Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in its midst. And after that, he will let you go. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall be when you go that you shall not go empty-handed. And then the last verse says, um, But every woman shall ask of her neighbor, namely of her who dwells near her house, articles of silver, articles of gold and clothing, and you shall put them on your sons and on your daughters, so you shall plunder the Egyptians. Moses says, What if they won't believe me or listen to my voice? Let's go to Exodus chapter 4. Verse 2. We're going to do quite a lot of Bible reading this morning. So the Lord said to him, What is that in your hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, Reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he said, cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent and Moses fled from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, Reach out your hand and take it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand, that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Furthermore, the Lord said to him, Now put your hand in your bosom. And he put his hand in his bosom. And when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous like snow. And he said, put your hand in your bosom again. So he put his hand in his bosom again and drew it out of his bosom. And behold, it was restored like his other flesh. Then it will be, if they do not believe you, nor heed the message of the first sign, that they may believe the message of the latter sign. And it shall be, if they do not believe even these two signs, or listen to your voice, that you shall take water from the river and pour it on the dry land. The water which you take from the river will become blood on the dry land. Verse 17 of that chapter. And you shall take this rod in your hand with which you shall do the signs. Go with me to Exodus chapter 7, please. Verse 8. Then the Lord spoke... To Moses and an Aaron saying, When Pharaoh speaks to you saying, Show a miracle for yourselves, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your rod and cast it before Pharaoh and let it become a serpent. So Moses and an Aaron went into Pharaoh 
And they did so, just as the Lord commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants, and it became a serpent. But Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers, so the magicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner with the enchantments. For every man threw down his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. And so here we see, and I want you to know this morning that God's word is absolutely trustworthy. They tried, the magicians and the sorcerers tried, and they were successful in doing, uh, throwing down their staffs, and it became snakes. But the power of God was greater than, they, than their power. God overpowered them because the rod that became a snake that Moses had ate up all the other snakes. So that tells us that God's word is absolutely trustworthy. After God sent the plagues to Egypt, Pharaoh said, go, and they went out of of Egypt just as the Lord said. They were rich because they they plundered Egypt. And so another example we find us uh, further on in the Bible, in the book of Kings, is when the king of Israel went with the king of Judah and of Edom to fight against the king of Moab. They marched for seven days, the Bible says, without water for the army or the animals. So they went to the prophet Elijah. Le- Elijah, sorry. Let's go to Second Kings, chapter three, verse fifteen. I'm not reading the whole story. I'm just giving you some of the scriptures that I feel is is important. But now bring me a musician. Something always happens with a prophetic when musicians begin to come forward and when they begin to play. Prophets always cause musicians to come because it helps to create the atmosphere for God to move. And they move with the prophetic. Then it happened when the musicians played that the hand of the Lord came upon him, and he said, Thus says the Lord, Make this valley full of ditches, for thus says the Lord, You shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain, yet that valley shall be filled with water, so that you, your cattle, and your animals may drink. And this is a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. He will also deliver the Moabites into your hand. Also, you shall attack every fortified city and every choice city and shall cut down every good tree and stop up every spring of water and ruin every good piece of land with stones. Now it happened in the morning when the grain offering was offered that suddenly water came by way of Edom and the land was filled with water. So God filled all those ditches without rain, without wind. And I want to say to you this morning that if you are in a dry place, begin to dig. Dig, dig, dig into the Word of God. And God will, as He says in His words, open up rivers in desolate heights. He will make your wilderness a pool of water and your dry land springs of water. The Bible says, even but the springs of water He will guide you with. So he who believes in me, the Bible says, as the scripture has said, that out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. So in Christ is the source of that water. Christ is the source of that life. Let's go to the New Testament. When we go to the New Testament, that we see that Jesus came to forgive all our iniquities iniquities and to heal all our diseases, to redeem our lives from destruction. Go with me to Matthew chapter 4. The Bible is real, and whatever is in the Bible is what God wants to see amongst us and in our midst has become the reality. Miracles should be something that becomes part of our everyday life. Matthew 4, verse 23 and 24. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases among the people. And then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases, 
and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. Go with me to Luke chapter 9, please. Verse 1 and 2. And he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He gave them power to cast out demons and heal the sick. So let's go now to Acts chapter 5. I want you to know that all over the world there is a cry in the hearts of the servants of God for miracles and signs and wonders. But you know what? He's given us the power. He's given us the Holy Spirit. And I'm talking to myself when I speak like this to you because we wait for God to do it and he's waiting for us. He's waiting for us to step out and to begin to pray, he's waiting for us to cast out demons. He's waiting for us to bring restoration. We know that it's not in our power and in our might, but it's in the name of Jesus. But it needs our faith to rise within us to be able to move with that. Verse 12 of chapter 5 says, And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were... All with one accord in Solomon's porch, yet none of the rest dared join them. But the people esteemed them highly, and believers were increasingly, increasingly added to the Lord. Multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. So the, here we see that the fear of the Lord... And the power of God came together. If you can believe, I want to say to you this morning that all things are possible. Sin, sickness, and demons are the comes from the kingdom of Satan. But righteousness, health, and the Holy Spirit represents and is the kingdom of God. Let's go to Acts chapter 8. Verse 6. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there was great joy in the city. There was no fear in the city because they came out, but there was great joy because of what God was doing. So we find there that Philip went and he preached the gospel of the kingdom with signs following. This is what this portion tells us about. The sick were healed. Demons were cast out. Demonstrating, He was demonstrating the power of the kingdom and the name of Christ. And great joy came into the city. We also read in Acts chapter 16 about a slave girl possessed with the spirit of divination who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. Under the power and ability of the Spirit, she was in contact with evil spirits who caused her to tell fortunes. She was a victim of Satan and in need of deliverance. When Paul commands the Spirit to come out of her in the name of Jesus, the Bible tells us she was delivered. She had no more power after that demon was cast out, and the master could no longer make money. And so he got so mad and he went and he made accusations against Paul and Silas and they were thrown in jail. But did they sit in the prison feeling sorry for themselves? No. Another sign and another miracle took place there. Because in the prison they prayed, they begin to pray and they begin to sing praises. And the Bible says that God sent forth a great earthquake. All the doors were open and all the bands were loosed. And so this morning you may ask the question, can a Christian have a demon? If we obey the command to be filled with the Spirit, then we give no place to the devil in our lives. The Holy Spirit and the devil cannot live in the same body. It's either God or not God. You may be under attack, but when you're under attack, there are three 
in instruments that you can use of dominion, and that is prayer, faith, and action. And that helps you and me to become and to be triumphant Christians. When we speak the name of Jesus, heaven stands at attention and the demons tremble. We, are, we also have the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And the Bible says in Romans 10, he says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Is signs, miracles, and wonders for now? I'll ask you again, only a few of you. Are signs, miracles, and wonders for now in these days that we are living in? If it's yes, I want to say to you, Jesus lives in the power of God in the now. And if you are baptized with the Holy Spirit and you believe Jesus said the signs will follow, then signs will follow you. You will cast out demons in His name. You will heal the sick in His name. You will speak with new tongues. That's what the Bible says. And people will recover. Amen? So God released us from all old ties. He set us free. He broke every bond of prison for us. I want to say to you this morning, let God arise. Claim your victory. It is God who breaks down every wall, and in His name, giants fall. Lift Him high. Let faith be your song that calms the storms. God do mighty things. There is nothing that God cannot do. There's a song that says, there's nothing my God cannot do. After disarming the devil, Christ gave the church power and authority to deal with him. The greater one, I want you to know this morning, lives in you. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Say after me, greater is he that is in me than him who is in the world. And if you believe that, say amen. So who are you this morning? You are in Christ. I want you to say this after me. I am in Christ. I live in Christ. Jesus, who is always the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He is constant in His love. Let's try again. He's constant in His love for me. And always faithful to His Word. And I have been given fullness of life in Christ. Amen? So if you believe it this morning, then I charge you to rise in the power and the strength of God Almighty. I see decorations made and jokes, and, and yokes, not jokes, yokes removed. <laughs> So uh, jokes maybe also, I don't know, no, no. So let your faith arise this morning, amen? amen? Faith allows us to cross the limits of the natural realm and to reach eternity. This is a year, this year of 2021, I cannot stress it enough, is one of the most important years in the, in the, in the church, this year is the year of preparation. This year is year that things are happening. All over, people are talking about, expecting. It's the year of training. It's the year of moving into what God wants. We cannot leave it and we cannot wait till next year because when God wants to, is ready to move in a greater measure than what we experience now, you and I have to be ready. Then it's not time to wonder about things. Amen. And so we are getting ready. We have asked you for quite a while, are you ready for change? Are you getting ready? But I'm saying to you this morning, get ready, get ready, get ready. Because before the end of September, things will change here. God's going to move in a miraculous way, and we're going to give Him glory and honor. We're going to see the glory of God coming down, and like never before. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to be so excited and full of joy. And I pray that even in this time, that before that, that God will baptize you with the joy of the Lord. That the joy of the Lord, that is your strength. That you will no longer struggle, but that you will be happy 
in knowing that God is with you. Hallelujah. And let it bubble over because that's what happens when that river comes up and that rivers begin to flow. It's bubbling. There's a song we used to sing. How does it go? There's a river of life flowing out from me. It makes the lame to walk and the blind to see. It opens prison doors, sets the captives free. There's a river of life flowing out from me. It's bubbling. It's bubbling. It's bubbling in my soul. I'm singing and shouting since Jesus made me whole. Folks don't understand it, nor can I keep it quiet. It's bubbling, 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 bubbling day and night. Amen. Hallelujah. We have got to know that we have the power and authority in Jesus' name. People are looking for the supernatural. I want to say to you, Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And that church is a supernatural church. And I'm asking you this morning, are you part of that church? Do you speak and pray in tongues? Are you willing to change? Do you believe what God says you are, that you can do what God says you can? So if your answer is yes, then stir up the gift of God that is in you. That goes for me too. We have to stir up that gift of God. What is required of us to move or operate in God's supernatural power? Number one, we need a continual fresh revelation. Faith does not work without revelation. Secondly, we need to hear, see, and perceive in the Spirit. That means we have to become sharp in the spirit. Thirdly, we must learn to exercise our faith. So what is faith? Faith is the mind of the Holy Spirit revealed to man so that he might operate and have dominion. When we, Paul prayed and he said that the, Lord of our, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Paul was referring here to the fact that the spirit of wisdom and revelation teaches us to flow in the supernatural. I pray the Holy Spirit will not next week or in a few months time, but even this morning begin to flow. Saturate this place. We need you, Holy Spirit. Another point is thanksgiving is the key to loosening God's supernatural power because it builds a place, a throne where God can dwell. Next point, praise is the proclamation and declaration of God's powerful deeds. Another point, in worship we recognize His majesty, sovereignty, and glory. The last one is a life of prayer and worship builds spiritual atmosphere. Amen. Amen. That means you need to pray more in tongues. If you speak in tongues, you have to pray more in tongues than what you pray in your own language. Yes. 